Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show presented by Kia. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal will be joining us momentarily. We'll talk about Carolina and look ahead to the Clemson Tigers. Clemson comes in 4-2 and two overall, 2-2 two and two in conference play. Lost a couple of games early, but they are starting to find their game. Joe, I would not give up on Clemson if I was a Clemson fan. I will tell you that they have got a quarterback that's as good as you need to win as many football games as there are in a season. They've got two great running backs. Their offensive line is underrated. And I think especially the front seven on defense is as good as anybody's in the country. They are a good-looking football team. As your former coach Howard Schnellenberger would say, if you went to a football catalog, you'd cut each position out on each, each different page because they all look like they belong in a football catalog. And you're right. And they have won a lot of football games and played a lot more football than a lot of us have, meaning playoff games and ACC championship games. They are a very talented team that has a championship coach. The, the catalog reference, by the way, was for us old timers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay with us. When we come back, Mario Cristobal joins the show coming up next. Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mario Cristobal Show, presented by Kia, Joe Zagacki, our broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. This week, the Hurricanes are at home. They take on the Clemson Tigers at Hard Rock Stadium, 8 o'clock kickoff, a titanic matchup with the Tigers we'll get to momentarily. Coming off a wild game in the Chapel Hill coach against North Carolina, heavyweight fight. You threw a lot of good punches. They threw a lot of punches. Ultimately, a couple of mistakes probably – uh, define that game. Yeah, certainly. So we uh, we played hard. Uh, we certainly did a good job recovering from some self-inflicted stuff in the first half, but uh, we allowed the momentum to get away from us in the third quarter. Third quarter was a really rough quarter for us, and we pushed hard in the fourth, but not enough, not enough for what we gave up in the third quarter. Coach, one approach that you and I both were raised on at this university is no excuses, mm -hmm. no blame but a hundred percent effort of learning what happened and getting better. Yeah, there, there's no self-pity around here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that like when you go forward and well, when you look back, you do it together. And so there's never anyone pointing a finger at anyone. It's we have to do a, a much better job at some of the routine stuff and prevent some of the self-inflicted wounds. And that means coaching. That means playing. That means as a program together, but always forward thinking and moving forward. The self-inflicted wounds, turnovers, um, Penalties that extended drives, and then the third downs. Let me walk us through that because on third down, uh, defensively you were really good most of the night, holding them to five for twelve on third downs. But two of them went for touchdowns. Mm, they did. You know, we uh, got caught in a couple of uh, you know third and long situations uh, near our goal line, and they capitalized on it in a big time way. And things that we got to certainly jump all over and uh, and get corrected and improve upon because we'll see it again, right? right. If you get beat on something on a particular week. You could rest assured that in some way, shape, or form, you're going to see it again down the line. Coach, we hear you talk about all the time, maybe not on this show, but on the field, about maintaining energy. And your team came out energized, and they gave you 60 minutes of energy, even through the third and fourth quarters, whatever it was, it was there. And that's something that you actually work on to make sure that they do that. Yeah, well, the care factor is high. You know, the, uh, the intent, the belief, um, the want to, there's a lot of really, really good things. And um, we got to keep, we got to do it just a better job of coaching and, and teaching that playing hard is, is not enough against the better teams, right? That uh, you've got to be on point and as airtight as you possibly can to prevent the stuff on routine plays uh, that could get you hurt. I think, uh, I thought that game also was a battle of who could get to their identity. And uh, early on, defensively, you're hitting their quarterback. They got you a little bit with tempo. Did their tempo get to their identity that really helps swing the game in their favor, the tempo? I think when the play count got really high, that's when tempo started having an effect. Uh, we had some good moments against tempo too yeah. with some tackles for losses, but some of the big runs, uh, some of the big plays were, can be attributed to, you know, they, they did a good job, not so much, I mean, not, not only with tempo, but the actual, the schematic part of it and some of their players just making a good play. Coach, I'm fortunate enough to be out there and see this, you work on turnovers constantly. Mm -hmm. Every day of every practice, there's periods to do that. Um, you had very few turnovers the first four games, and then you've given up the ball nine times the last two games. How do you go back and try and 
get them back focused in on how they were in the beginning of the year because you do work on it constantly. Yeah, it's always uh, the most, uh, I don't know, challenging thing to to articulate, you know, when when addressing a game or, or a post game when it comes to turnovers because the amount of work invested in it is, you know, it's, it's, it's insane, you know. And so, um, you know, you attack in all sorts of ways. You do it in, in, in the film room. You go outside, you, you simulate it with your drills. You, you make sure the scout team is poking at the ball. You're trying to rip it out of there in all sorts of situations. And you make sure when the offense and defense that you go good on good every day. So you're simulating the speed of the game. So uh, when it doesn't uh, go the way you want it, um, there is, again, no excuses. You got to, well, we didn't do the process well enough. We've got to up the competition, the level of competition and make sure that you know the football is the most important thing on every single play and that we get a better result because uh, certainly what we've done um, wasn't good enough and didn't get us the results that we wanted. On, on these shows, it's easy to you know pick apart your own team and all that and forget that there's a, another, another side. And you guys badgered Drake May, you hit Drake May, you harassed Drake May, and probably his worst numbers of the year Yet he did make some big plays, and that's probably you know a credit to him, right? What, what were your thoughts on uh, on his play? Because he made some big throws when he had to. Yeah, he's a great football player, and he's got a, a really, really good supporting cast, and, and they do a good job coaching him up. You know, he's an experienced guy. He sees things, you know, before they happen, and he understands where he can't go with it. Uh, and he understands if there's trouble, you know, his best way out of trouble, whether it be taking off and running, throwing it away, uh, sliding, whatever it may be. He's a really good football player. Coach Jacoby George really just seems to be growing week after week. Six catches, 125 yards, but also you had Horton involved in the ball game, and Brashard Smith. It's nice to see that those guys continue to get more reps. Yeah, we, we need more and more uh, from all those guys, you know, and we're going to push them hard this week to every detail of the game because they're showing signs of, uh, of being just great, you know, and there's more. There's more in the tank. There's more meat on the bone and we got to get to it. Uh, and the best way to attack something and address something and improve something is to just show a path towards betterment. And I think those guys are eager to compete and get better. And we're going to lean and press on them more. I thought uh, Tyler made some great throws. The touchdown to Jacoby was a heck of a throw under heavy pressure. The turnovers did hurt. Uh, he did get in, in, into a drop back game, right? That's not the easiest deal. What was your evaluation of what he gave you against Carolina? No, he was as gutsy as it gets. You know, he liked one throwback, and we all get that. But uh, you cannot undervalue uh, the amount of plays that he made. You know, so, you know the one touchdown pass to Jacoby. You know, under pressure while taking a shot right to the gut. Um, continually just putting the ball on the money, giving us a chance to just continue extenderize, make big plays. You know, rolling out and finding Isaiah Horton on the fourth down play to keep the sticks moving. I mean. So many great plays, and you know what? When it became a drop back game, that's an advantage defense. Yeah. You know, guys get to pin the ears back, and you want to win more than you lose, but you're gonna they're gonna get you a couple times. We took some shots, and we took a couple sacks, but overall, you know, those guys up front they did a good job. So um, Tyler, I thought, you know, he played his butt off, and um, you know, really proud of him, and expecting him to just keep getting better and better. Coach, your tight end room has been very helpful in the run game, but it's also good to see finally Elijah Arroyo back. He made it onto the field. It looks like he's 100% healthy, but now that's a huge upgrade, not only to the room, but to the offense. Yeah, it is. Uh, Elijah, I mean, he could do it all. He could stretch the field. He's good in the run game. He's good in the box. He's good in the perimeter. Uh, and our players love him. I mean, he's a very well-respected guy due to uh, his investment in the program, his way of being on and off the field. So it's awesome to have him back. I thought one of the... Uh, Cool plays of the night. You went for it on fourth down, fourth and three, from like midfield. Mm -hmm. uh, you, they got a hot set of dice over into the other sideline, but you had a conviction at that point of the game. What was your what was your thinking and uh, mindset at that point? I think you know we we try to stay aggressive as much as we possibly can, um, and we, we figured this was going to be a game that was going to go back and forth. Um, I felt that our defense was was getting to their quarterback and affecting their quarterback, and also felt that offensively that the things that we were calling and drawing up were were designed and, and they were going to work mm -hmm. you know it was a very good play design and so we uh, trusted our players and went with it coach Ruben Bain we could probably talk about every week for the next three years but he, again uh, another sign of his improvement is how many times he gets held mm -hmm. I mean the offensive line he's just he is a beast out there and just keeps producing and producing and 
and does it in a way like he's been doing it his whole life, which I guess really he has, but not at this level. Mm -hmm. No, he's a, he's a difference maker. Um, the way he conducts himself on the field as well as off the field mm -hmm. is exceptional. Uh, raised the right way. Um, he's, he's exactly what, what you want, you know, on, as a teammate, as a player, uh, as an ambassador for the program. But he's, uh, he's been a difference maker. Want to keep bringing in guys like that into the program. They, they certainly make a tremendous impact. Um, there's no question your team played hard on Saturday against Carolina. And that we'll get to Clemson. It's going to require the same kind of effort. But uh, this is part of the growing, right, of this program. You've got some uh, good leadership on this program. You'll need more leadership because the way to bust through is to keep on playing hard and until you get the desired results. Well, I think it's, it's as simple as this. And it's very tangible. You know, the, the progress of our program is very tangible. Our, our offense uh, total offenses somewhere in the top 10 in the country or total defenses somewhere in the top 15 18 somewhere in that vicinity um, But where we kill ourselves has been Turnovers and penalties which now we're in the bottom maybe hundred of the country. Yeah. Okay, and those that's a really tough balance um, and Those things are controllable and we have to do it starts with being great leaders as coaches We have to get that done you know, and then we have to do that together as a program with our players. We have to get that done. We have to look in the mirror and analyze and assess that all this good stuff that we're doing. Well, we're also hurting ourselves in routine situations on routine plays because we're doing this. And we have to do that as a whole collectively as coaches and as players. That's not pointing a finger at one person, one coach, one player. That is a program thing that we have to get done because those things have to match up. If you're doing that well on those on each side of the ball, respectively, that other part has to come with it as well. Part of the way you catch up is the demands you put on your players at practice. Today's scout team player doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be there next week or the next practice. You try and create enough competition to where everyone has to work for their job, but also get impr constantly improve every single week. They have to. It's a, you know, the way we designed the scout team, it's a de developmental squad. Those guys are assessed, evaluated every single week, and we've already moved up several guys that are getting playing time, not only on special teams, but on offense and defense. So um, we look forward to continuing to push the envelope with that, getting more guys uh, game ready. And like we told uh, you know, our, our staff earlier today, I mean, youth and or injuries will never be used as an excuse. We gotta go, you know, and it's time to go. All right, coach, we'll talk more about the Clemson Tigers coming up, but first time for our high performance moment of the week presented by Kia. And what a moment this was, Tyler Van Dyke out of the shotgun, under heavy pressure, flips it out there to Jacoby George for the touchdown. What a lovely throw. That it was, Joe. It starts with the precision route that Jacoby George ran. He was very precise in that route, perfect timing. But you want to talk about toughness? Look at your quarterback. He knows that he is going to get hit the second that he releases the ball and throws the perfect pass, George, right into the end zone. You see a little bit of a hold there by the Tar Heel, but George keeps his eye on the ball, secures it, and crosses the goal line. But more importantly, look at Van Dyke. Take that shot, and he knew it was coming. Our High Performance Moment of the Week presented by Kia. All right, it is Miami and Clemson on Saturday night at Hard Rock Stadium, 8 o'clock kickoff. We'd love to see a great crowd for the Kings and the Tigers. Clemson comes in 4-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in conference play, averaging 32 points a game. They give up about 19 points a game, but there aren't too many teams in college football over the last 10 years that have a better overall resume than what Clemson has accomplished. Yeah, they, they've established themselves as a championship program, uh, have done a, a great job with recruiting, with culture, uh, have a blueprint that they believe in and it's worked really well for them and this team is very it's a direct reflection of what their beliefs are. Coach they had a couple brand name quarterbacks that led them to national championships but this young man's pretty darn good himself I don't think he can be underestimated at all. No he's, he's excellent he has all the tools um, he makes plays all over the field again with his arm with his feet, uh, the playmakers around them are, he's got a chunk of them, you know, and he's got a big physical offensive line. Uh, he's, he's an excellent football player. Yeah, they're fifth in the league in offense, and they're able to run the ball at Shipley, mm -hmm. and uh, the big back behind him, um, Mafa, they are, he, 
they can be powerful in their run game, right? Yeah, Moff and Shipley are excellent backs. Yeah. They are powerful. They're bullies, you know. <laughs> they run you over. They run through you. Um, they're, they're excellent receivers. Very underrated part of their game as well. They're excellent blockers. You watch them in protection. They're meeting linebackers at the line of scrimmage and knocking them back. Those guys are complete backs. Because when I watch their defense... I think their front seven is so underrated. Nobody, nobody talks about it. But the defensive line, the linebackers, they just they seem to bring it every single snap. Yeah, they are NFL talent across the board. Uh, a scheme that brings a lot of chaos with it, a lot of movement, a lot of pressure. Heck, you'll see pressure up to 50% of the time, maybe even more so. You know, and on third down, as exotic as it gets, so buckle up. Yeah, those linebackers, uh, Trotter and Carter, um, I guess you would just say they, they are solid. Well, they're more than solid. They're excellent <laughs> football players. Uh, and you, you know what? In the ACC, you see that every single week. You see top-notch talent in the front sevens, right? And uh, we saw some this past week, and now we see another set of elite players at the linebacker position. Could you always talk about, and it's been talked about for years, is the, the film doesn't lie. Well, Clemson has two losses, but they could very easily be 6-0. and I mean, this is a football team that it certainly can compete with anybody in the country. Mm-hmm. And I think... Uh, you know, they, when people watch film on them, they recognize that, you know, and our players have already recognized that. So are our staff. So again, they are, they are a typical Clemson team. You know, they, uh, they certainly, they're a championship caliber football team. And you had prior to Miami, you had some matchups with them when you were at Alabama, right? So uh, very familiar with their style of play, but what, what they rolled out in the field in the past and what they have now probably pretty similar to what you saw when you were in those championship games. Yeah, those were the games where it was like, uh, it was like looking in the mirror. You know, you had the same, you know, girth, power in the trenches. You had the same speed and explosiveness outside, dynamic playmakers at those skilled positions, guys that could run you down and hawk you down at quarterback, at the linebacker and safety. So that's what you got in your Clemson team. I think that the thing that gets lost is when they talk about the great offenses that Clemson has had is people don't think they're physical. It's not a finesse offense. It's not a finesse football team. They are a very physical opponent. They're extremely physical football team. Um, and they really they try to hit your quarterback. You know, that's what's part of their the plan is they really want to affect the quarterback. Um, we talked about third down, how exotic they are, how they have a plan, and really game plan your protection. So really, really talented and well-coached front. It didn't happen for them overnight either, right? It took them four or five years to get to the point where they started to roll. So one good example it does take time and two uh once you get there is there something that you look at in their program and say that it's uh, other than the head coach dabo has been there something that's consistent in their culture stuck to the process that simple a blueprint a process and let time and people take over coach you, you talk about some stages share with us the stages that the freshmen have to go through from when they get here to now starting to get some playing time and what do you how do you try and progress the younger players well, you try to get them here in January, right, uh, of their senior year in high school because it's it's invaluable getting a, a, an entire winter conditioning program under your belt, playing in spring football, going to class, knocking out 15 credits in the spring, get another six to nine in the summer. Uh, that's invaluable. I mean, you're already in the swing of things. You know how the process and what the routine is. So that's not a shock to you so that when the season comes around, that they can really still focus on the main thing, academics while they're in class and football while they're here. Their mind's not all over the place trying to figure out, man, how am I gonna balance this stuff? So, uh, but everybody comes in at different stages in their development. You know, obviously we talked about Ruben Bain and we've talked a lot about Francis and how much, you know, those guys have just made an unbelievable impact. And then there's a ton of other guys that are getting a lot of playing time uh, that are making an impact as well. And we mentioned Mark Fletcher earlier today about you know, him going to be back in a couple weeks, but he was a guy that was impacting us a bunch. You know, Ray Ray's getting more playing time. I mean, um, you progress him as fast as they can handle it, um, but there's no hesitation when you'll reach that level of trust to put him in a game. How important uh, is it in this game offensively to avoid those negative plays, stay ahead of the chains? They are they only give up 86 yards a game on the ground. And on third downs, they're allowing only 33%. So they're kind of strangling the run game mm-hmm. and putting teams in tough spots on third down. Yeah, third and long is not a good thing yeah. for, against anybody, but particularly this team, because of the variety of pressures and challenges that they bring. And then coupled with the fact that they have a secondary that can play man coverage. I mean, if they want to, they could play man coverage every snap. They're that talented. So you got to make sure that you're very efficient on offense. 
Coach, the importance of Hurricane fans being at this football game, I mean, it's, it's big. I mean, I'm sure there'll be recruits here as well, but it's also important to, to get behind this team as they continue to grow. Critically important. You know, when, when we play at their stadium, you could feel that. You know, they make it very difficult. And we, uh, we certainly want and need and appreciate the support of our people, our fans, uh, making it difficult for whenever an opponent comes into our stadium. You touched on the tight ends a little bit earlier. Um, Arroyo is making progress. How important will that be maybe distributing the ball to the tight ends because those numbers are kind of low receiving wise and you know, your other three outside aces are kind of carrying the load right now. Sure. Well, I mean, it's, it hasn't been designed that way. It's, right. just, it's happened to work out that way um, because people do, they cover down our tight ends. They know that, you know, Cam's a good player. There's plenty of film from him back when he was at Oregon and, and Riley is, you know, already shown enough that he can be a weapon as well. So the so ball just hasn't gotten to them. But I think as, as you watch this offense continue to evolve, you'll see that tight end production go up and up and up. Corey Gallus, coach, who was perfect again. And how confident does it make you feel, to, or how comfortable does it make you feel to have the confidence in him that you can rely on him? And he's turned into really almost automatic. Yeah, he is uh, he's special. Um, on kickoffs, that's that's so yeah. underappreciated to the outside world. But a guy that can kick it out the end zone like he does and, and force those automatic touchbacks, uh, he's fun to be around. Great energy, just a, a great human being and a great player. I gotta give, I gotta give Dylan Joyce some credit here too. Oh, He's wow. been hammering the ball, yes. and and their returner for Carolina, he was averaging twenty yards of a return, but. Uh, Joyce has done a nice job for you in his first year. He's done a great job. Um, he's also, you know, we've used a lot of different punt formations. He's done a really good job understanding where the free hitters are and how long he can hang on to the ball. Um, and he's he's been like a pitching wedge. He's put it right where you need it and uh, set us up with some really good field flips. Coach, talk about how you get on a coverage team. Look, talk about the type of personality that you're looking for, and I'm sure there's the dynamic size and speed wide that you want. But how do you how do you get on the coverage teams? Because really, it's kind of it can be a glorious position to be honest with you if you, if it's done right. Yeah, like anything else, got to earn it. Yeah. You know, there's no uh, you got to have real ones on there, guys that are are into the speed and collisions that come with the game and and throwing their bodies around recklessly while understanding the precision of their identifications, the calls they got to make, the angles they got to take, what part of the field they're responsible for. You need some diligent, smart guys that are also complete maniacs about going down there and getting guys on the ground. All right, the Clemson Tigers come in Saturday night, 14th meeting between Miami and Clemson. Series almost dead even, 7-6. Clemson a one-game advantage, so we'll leave, uh, be nice to even that thing up, Coach, and uh, the very best of luck. Thank you, guys. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Mario Cristobal. Stay tuned. We'll continue with more of the show right after this. Happy to welcome you back on the Mario Cristobal Show presented by Kia. Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. will be at Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday night. 8 o'clock kickoff, 4-2 and two, Clemson Tigers. 8 p.m. kickoff. like to see their rock really rocking against Clemson. You know, there's... A special place it, Hard Rock turns out to be at a night game. Big opponent, national television. I think everybody needs to get out there and support these Hurricanes. And let's show Clemson how it's done. Canes need a big defensive effort tonight, uh, Saturday night. Uh, Clemson running for almost 200 yards a game. Yeah, it's going to be big, Joe. Miami's defense led the nation up until the North Carolina game in rushing defense. They need to find that again. They were holding opponents up just to 58 yards a game. That'll be a tough number to hit on Clemson. I think if you can keep them in the low 100s, you've had a good night. Okay, Miami and Clemson, Saturday, Hard Rock Stadium. We'll see you there. Thank you for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week on the Mario Cristobal Show.